Our ancestors had a dream. Dreams that were born in Ireland and France and Germany and Scandinavia and other countries. But today I'm going to center mainly on the dreams that some of our Norwegian ancestors who founded this congregation had. Many of them were what we call husmen, or were called husmen in Norway. A husman had the right to occupy a small bit of land on somebody's farm. For example, in my family, on the Brecky farm where my grandfather was born, they had just a little corner of a field and had a little house there. And sometimes there were up to 10, 12 husmen, different families living on one single farm. And they all had to eat out a living and all had to feed the hungry mouths that were coming and growing. And during the 1840s, times were tough. There was famine in the land. Too many mouths to feel, feed. And Hoosman were the first ones tapped for the military service, while the businessmen in town, they were exempt. And the church, too, was oppressive. Rationalism had penetrated the church. Liberalism was abroad in the church. But something was happening to give, give them a possibility to fulfill a dream. They started to hear stories of people who had gone to America, this strange land, and had written letters back home telling about the successes that many of them had. Stephen Olson Helly, my great uncle, was one of the first Valdres serves to come to this Manitowoc Valdres area. And he got, so, that was in 1846. He got so excited about being here that he went back to Norway three times to get Valdres people to come to this area and settle here. In the Valdres Samban book, it says that Stephen Olson Helly was the prime mover and more than any other person to get Valdres people to come to this area. As these Hoosmen and their families and others began to dream of new land, new opportunities, it was the fulfillment of this verse that I read. See, I have set before you an open door which no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and not denied my name. So they dreamed of emigrating to this new land. Just think of how difficult it must have been. Have you ever visualized them gathering the night before they left? The relatives were there, mother, father, grandpa, grandma, neighbors and friends, all there to say goodbye. And during that era, they would not be back to Norway ever again they would see their relatives for the last time. My mother-in-law, for example, was only 16 when she came alone to America, never to see some of her family again. We visited some of the old farms and some of, the, some of them were set in incredible beauty, but they couldn't live on beauty. And we visited some of the churches too, like the Alnus Church, the Hurum Church, the Sritful Church, the Loman State Church. We could visualize our ancestors sitting there on the last Sunday before they left. Maybe they looked over up front and saw the baptismal font where my great-grandfather was baptized, where my grandfather was baptized, and many, many others, relatives of yours too. They must have looked around and seen the altar railing and there they knelt with for communion for the last time and heard the words, do this in remembrance of me. They might have walked through the cemetery for one last time to recall the relatives who had gone before them. And I did the same yesterday here. And the names were the same. Alnus, Helly, Bergie, Evenson, Ballasted, Alfson, Rugney, Sabo, Abel, Gisted, Open, Tone, Ranham, Reinertsen, and the list would go on and on and on. But they had a new dream, and this superseded everything else, and they began to pack. 
Imagine you mothers here today packing for a large family to be on board ship where you had to cook your own meals. Every family had to supply their own meals. And sometimes those trips on the ocean were up to 13 weeks. And they had to pack enough food to feed them. Some of them carried with them the round top trunks, and I have one of them, beautifully rose mulled. And what a trial it must have been when they got off the ship at Albany, New York, and got on a barge in the Erie Canal. We've seen a part of that. And uh, along one side is what they call a footpath. On the other side is another footpath. And there was a horse in each one of them and ropes to the barge. And they traveled for 325 miles by horse and barge up the Erie Canal. The canal was smelly, even dead horses floating around in the canal. And they went two miles per hour, or per, yeah, two miles per hour. So you can imagine the time it took to get there. People got sick. Babies were born. Sometimes they ran out of food. There were different nationalities that the Norwegians had never heard of before and different languages around them that they had never heard before. Then when they got to Port Washington, then they met relatives or friends they had known in Norway, and they would move in with them, even though there was a one-room cabin or two rooms. And a family of four or six or eight would stay with that, those other families for sometimes up to a year until they went up to Valders, picked out some property, and then went back and got their family. Some of them went by ox carts then from Port, uh, Port Washington, and they, my ancestors, for example, walked to Green Bay to register a piece of property they had bought over here near Rural Thompson's, and then they, uh, paid a dollar and 25 cents an acre, and uh, many people did that so sort of thing to gain a foothold here in this area. Before they had a church building in this community, they worshiped in the private homes. And once in a while, Pastor Stoop would come out from Muskego area, and he would baptize and occasionally have a funeral and they would meet for worship in a home. And uh, my grandmother, Anna Marie Aubel, and M.G. Madsen were the first babies baptized in this parish in 1850. And then it was to build a church, the Jerpin Church first, the West Valders Church second, and our Savior's Church much later. And it's interesting to note how they how they selected the site for the West Valders Church. Some of you know the story. They argued and argued and argued at one meeting after the other as to where they should put the church. And somebody wrote that the Norwegians have a tradition of disharmony. <laughs> it's hard for them to agree. And so they argued about this. And finally, they decided to have a contest between the Ole Gixton and my great grandfather Thomas Olson Helly as to who could cut down a tree the fastest. So they started to in their contest, and nobody could swing an axe like Ole Gixton, and his tree fell first. So he got to choose the site of the church, and it is a beautiful site up there at the west. Church Cemetery now. Some of you have heard me tell about an experience we had on our farm west of Alders here. We had one baby that died, baby boy. Another one uh, was three and a half and he drowned in our cistern. And then when I was 13, my 16-year-old brother died. I never forgot the night that we were called to the hospital to see him for the last time. My parents were there. My aunt Hattie Geraldson was there. 
We said our goodbyes, then walked into the hallway there of that hospital, and way down at the end of it was a lounge. And there was our pastor, Estheset, on his knees, praying for the salvation of my brother. And my mother said he stayed there all night. One of the strongest reasons why I'm preaching from this pulpit today, I couldn't forget his prayers. Then I think of some years before that when my cousin Arnold Torreson died. He was just nine. I was younger, and I'll never forget my father lifting me up and to see Arnold in the casket. And the congregation sang, Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. We are here today because of eight people. Thomas Olson Helly and his wife, Kari Hoime, Torius Torreson and his wife, Ann Johnson, Otto and Sophia Nelson, and Evan and Guri Geraldson. Of course, there were parents of these folks and grandparents, etc., but these folks were the ones who came to America to begin new lives here. The families lived close to each other, and there were many marriages between the families. George Torreson describes what happened. I'm George Torreson. Uh, Marty Torreson was my dad, and uh, my grandfather was George and uh, Christina uh, Torreson. But uh, Mark Berge, you mentioned that, Jim, uh, married an Evenson. And uh, so that's another part of my uh, line. I'm a Torreson, Thompson, Nelson, Evenson. And, uh, <laughs> but to really understand the intermarriages, one needs to listen to my sister, Beverly Thompson Hatlin, as she lays it all out. You will have a complete understanding when she gets done. Ha, ha, ha. Now, so you were asking how people in this gathering are related. Yeah. And the way I'm seeing it is that uh, we have a grouping made up. Uh, everybody started from Thomas Olson Scraybergett Helly, who came from the Helly farm in 1852, along with two of his brothers. And, um, and so Thomas Helly was the beginning, except there are many Torresons here. And with the Torresons, it was Turius Torreson who came from Evje, Norway, E-V-J-E, -E, which is in the Bigland area. So not in the Valdres area, but um, more in South Norway. And it was when Turius Torreson settled here in the Valdres area that the Torreson Thompson uh, relationships began to grow. <laughs> and George can go into much more detail, but for instance, my, my grandfather again was Elmer Thompson, and his wife was Aletta Geraldson. And, um, but Aletta's mother was Brigitta Torreson, and she married George Matthias Geraldson. So a Torreson became a Geraldson, but later in that family, a Christina Torreson married George Thompson. And so then you had the Thompson Torresons. <laughs> and I know that there's at least one more way, and George would have to tell you that, except that I think part of it lies in the fact that then the youngest of, um, well, Thomas... Olson Helly and his wife, Kari Evans' daughter, Hoima, had um, six children, four boys and two girls. And um, their, um, their son, Evan, who was always called Edwin, 
uh, Evan married the first girl born in the Valdres area and the first to be baptized in the old church. So Evan Helly Thompson married Anna Marie um, Abel, A-U-B-O-L. So you get the Abels, and this town is just full of Abels. And, uh, and together they had, um, they had 11 children. Um, and there again, uh, the Thompsons and uh, the Torsons came into the family because Christina Thompson, the daughter of Evan and Anna Marie, married George Torrison. So that's a third. So the names, list the names again. There's Thompson, Torrison, Geraldson, Abel, and then you get into, I mean, there are many more that were related. The Nelson family um, comes in uh, because Hartley Torrison married Lola Nelson. And then the sister who isn't here, who died, Brigetta, sister of my dad, Conrad, and Elmira and Eva Jean, Brigetta married Lola's brother. I mean, this is just... You know. Now, is it clear in your mind? Probably not. Let me walk you through the families and see if you can get it in your mind. The great exodus from Norway took place around 1850. Stephen Olsen Helly, brother of Thomas, encouraged folks from Valdres, Norway, to come to the new land, and many relatives followed. This is the Heli Farm in Valdres, Norway, as depicted by J.C. Dahl, one of Norway's most famous artists of the 19th century. And this is a view from my, cousin, my fourth cousin's farm in Valdres. It is hard to believe, looking at this picture, that people would ever want to leave Norway. And when you are surrounded by the waterfalls in Norway, it is just overwhelming. But as my grandfather said, you can't live on beauty. And so many people decided to go to a new country where they could get larger plots of land. Also, in Norway, the eldest son had the right to buy the farm from his parents, and this left many younger sons and daughters to fend for themselves. This is the church where the Heli family worshipped and where Oli, Edwin, Marit, and Thomas Thompson were baptized. Thomas Olson Helly came to the Valders area to look for land and settle down. He located a plot of land and bought it for $1.25 an acre. If you look at the map in front of you, this piece of land is number two, just southeast of the village of Valders. Thomas and Kari built this house, which still stands and is located at the Manitowoc County Historical Society, Pinecrest Historical Village. Many of you have been there. That house, by the way, had to be reconstructed because of the aging process, and John Thompson's dad, Oren Thompson, did a lot of the work and paid for much of it too. It was a labor of love fixing up that old house. Eventually, other families came from Norway too. The farms were somewhat spread out. 
Number one was the Anders and Kari Abel farm. Number two was Thomas and Kari Helly's farm with number three, Tori and Ingrid Sabo right next to it. Number four was the farm of Edwin and Anna Marie Thompson, one of Thomas and Kari's sons. Later, in about 1910, George and Elmer Thompson each received half of that farm after Edwin quit farming and built a home in Valders. This home, built by Edwin and Anna Marie, is now owned by George Thompson, Torreson, George Torreson, but I think it's in his will that it be returned to the Thompson family when he is no longer with us. Thanks, George. Thomas and Kari Hoimi Thompson had many children, including Ole Thompson, the great-grandfather of David, John, Paul, and Marilyn Thompson. One of Ole and Oline Hillman's children was Thomas Thompson. He and his wife, Bertina Helgeson, were the parents of John's dad, Oren Thompson. Oren married Helen Lauderdale. John and his brother David and my brother Merv used to play together when we were visiting our grandparents every summer. John and David were wild and crazy kids as youngsters. Merv's uh, video will reveal that. They also hung around with Ron Torreson, who also had stories to tell of their shenanigans. There was one time they came over to Grandpa and Grandma's farm and we decided to walk back to their place, and the quickest way to do that was to walk on the railroad tracks. Uh, and on the railroad tracks there were bridges that <laughs> over, I think, water, but anyway, a br a br we had to go acro across a couple of bridges, and uh, I got scared that the train would come when we were on the bridge, and there wasn't a lot of, uh, lot of place to go if the train came, so we hurried across the bridge to make sure that no train would show up as we're walking across the bridge. Once in a while we try to race a little bit with the horses and one time it didn't work out so good. Uh, I made it through a gate and Mervyn and his team didn't quite make it. They took out a few principles along the way. <laughs> Another son of Thomas and Kari Hoymit Thompson was Edwin. He married Anna Marie Abel. Edwin and Anna Marie had 11 children and these children directly impacted many of us. Anders Thompson, who married Emma Madsen, was the fourth child of Edwin and Anna Marie. Uh, my name is Jim Thompson, uh, son of Arthur Thompson, grandson of Anders, and uh, we live in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I'm Al Fenlon. I'm the oldest one of the Anders Thompson grandchildren. Uh, my mother was Esther. She married Al Fenlon, and they lived in Valder's area until about 1933 or so. We moved to Sheboygan and uh, moved back out here in 1938. Okay, I'm Carol Schaffer. Uh, my mother was raised in Valders, and her name was Jenny Thompson. And she came from a family of four children, and my grandfather's name was Anders Thompson, and my grandmother was Emma Madsen Thompson. George Thompson, who married Emma Snortum, was born in 1883. We had fond memories of Grandpa picking us up when we lived in Manitowoc already, and Grandma was deceased, and he would pick us up and go to the county fair. 
and none of the other grandchildren wanted to go because they had to spend so much time in the horse barns. <laughs> And uh, I'd swear that he could have worked at the county fair judging the horses. Yeah. Yep. He knew his horses. He pointed out all the good parts. And cows. We had to go to the cow yeah. barns. So. Well, even the chicken, the pigs. Yeah. We had to see all the animals, yeah. but especially his loveless horses. Yeah. And then we had breakfast, and then he took us on the tilt the worlds <laughs> That was every year. That was always ice our... cream. Don't forget the ice cream. <laughs> Elmer Thompson, who married Aletta Geraldson was born in 1885. I remember uh, going over to the Torrison farm. Uh, Ron Torrison, I think, was a year older than I was, and we would play together. And then Reggie Torrison was some years older. I got to know him better when when he was a pastor here in the Twin Cities. But uh, Ron and Reggie's father was Norman Torrison, and he loved to tease me. He loved to call uh, Grandpa and Grandma Thompson's farm a frog farm. Oh, you were on a frog farm. You're raising frogs there. And I got so irate. He just, he just would never let up about a frog farm. And, of course, then when we had threshing season, <laughs> there were all kinds of frogs down there that these guys were coming across under the grain, so there was some truth in it maybe, but I thought that was the greatest insult I'd ever heard, and I would try to defend it, then I'd say, no, you have a frog farm, no, I have a frog farm, and, and so Norman Tor Torrison was this jokester, and, uh, and I knew at the time we were related in two different ways, we were related through, uh, through uh, uh, Grandma Letta's side, and we were also related through the Thompson side somehow, and, and so... Uh, there was this close connection, but I'll never forget Norman Torrison and the frog farm. One story I remember is I was down here and this rooster came to visit me. Now my brother told about this same rooster that might have been eaten that night for a chicken dinner. <laughs> but um, this rooster was bothering me and I was probably eight, nine years old or maybe seven or six. And I got so mad that I reached down and picked up a rock. And Ron, what do you think I did with it? I threw it at the rooster. And the rooster was over here someplace, close to the chicken coop. And I missed. And I broke one of those windows right in that chicken coop. <laughs> and I was sitting here, or standing here, thinking about what I had done. And knew that my grandpa would be upset because I had broken this window. And I was thinking, now, if I walked to Valder's and got, bought some glass, brought it out here, and installed, I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, but I had all these thoughts, and all of a sudden, there was a hand, a large, giant hand, on my shoulder, and my grandpa gave me the only spanking that I ever got on this farm at that time. And uh, he was just not happy with me at all, but... Uh, then later, my brother told about this rooster that was bothering him and that night chicken dinner. So maybe, uh, maybe it was the same rooster that met its fate. Rule Thompson, the baby of the family being born in 1892, married Esther Harvey. When she, the day, day or two before she died, she was knitting a pair of mittens for me. And she got those finished and I went to the barn and was playing with the cats, I suppose, and take, took my mittens off and laid them down. And a calf got one and chewed the thing up. Well, Grandma said, you know, I was all upset, a little kid. And Grandma said, well, I'll, I'll just replace it. I'll get a new one for you. But then she had that stroke, and, and she never finished it. And for years, we had a, a trunk upstairs that had a bunch of, well, I called it junk, but things that Mom or Dad wanted to save. 
and they were thrown in that trunk. And that one lone mitten stayed in that trunk for years. Torius Torreson and wife Anne Johnson came from southern Norway and chose the Valders area in which to live. Torius and Anne had a number of children. George Torreson, not the one here today, was one of them, and he and his wife Christina Thompson Thompson had eight children. One of their sons was Hartley Torreson, who married Lola Nelson, and that is how the Nelsons were involved in the Torreson family. Another of George and Christina's children was Norman Torreson, who married Lillian Scatrood, and they had two sons, Reggie and Ron. Uh, my dad, Hartley Torreson, was born here in 1907. He was wow. the first to be born in the new house. And I'll bring... So the old house born, burned in what, 02, you no, said? No, in 36. My dad was born here in 1907. Oh, in the original house. The original house. And it burned in 36. Finally, Evan Geraldson came from southern Norway and married Guri Steffen's daughter, who came from the Valdres area. <clears throat> One of their children was George Matthias Geraldson, who married Birgitta Torreson. You will see in a few minutes how this makes the intersection of these families very interesting. This is a picture of Eva Jean Thompson on the Evan Geraldson farm in Horta, Norway. Back in 1999, when Conrad Thompson was in Valdres, Norway, he met with a local genealogist and discovered something very interesting. On the upper left, you will see Mark's grandfather's lineage. On the upper right, Mark's grandmother's lineage. Got that? Okay. Now, back to the left on line five is my great-great-grandmother, Kari Hoime, and go across where it says, sister of Ambjorg Hoime. So, Kari and Ambjorg were sisters. Kari was my great-great-grandmother, and Ambjorg was my great-great-great-aunt, or something like that. Then, back to the left, Kari married my great-great-grandfather, Thomas Olson Helle. Look at lines 5, 6, and 7. On the right, Ambjorg married Stephen, or Stefan Goodmanson, and they had a daughter, Guri Stefan's daughter, line 9, who married Evan Geraldson on line 10. They are my great-great-grandparents on my father's mother's side of the family. Meanwhile, back over to the left side on line 10, Edwin Thompson was born to Thomas and Kari Helley, and Edwin Thompson is my great-grandfather. Edwin's son on line 13 is Elmer Thompson, my grandfather, and he married... Going across to the right, the daughter of Matthias Geraldson and Brigitta Torreson, Aletta Geraldson, who is my grandmother. On the left, on line 17, Conrad Thompson was born to Elmer. And on line 19, on the right side, Conrad Thompson is born to my grandmother, Aletta Geraldson. Go back to the left, on line 19, and I was born to Conrad Thompson, and on line 21 on the right, 
I am born to Conrad Thompson. <laughs> All right, now, you are totally confused, I'm sure, but it makes a whole lot of sense. Look then at the C column and go down to line 10, where Edwin Thompson, my great-grandfather, is the first cousin of Evan Geraldson. On line 13, Elmer Thompson, my grandfather, is the second cousin of Matthias Geraldson, my great-grandfather on that side of the family. Then, on line 17, my father Conrad Thompson is the third cousin of his mother, Aletta Geraldson, my grandmother. And on line 19, I am the fourth cousin of my dad, Conrad Thompson. And finally, my children, Chris and Kenny, are the fifth cousins of me. And Mark Thompson is the fourth cousin once removed of Mark Thompson. Did you get all of that? No, of course not. But it is a rather unique situation. And so this is a brief introduction to the Thompson, Torreson, Nelson, and Geraldson families. There are, of course, hundreds of descendants, maybe thousands. In the Elmer and Aletta Geraldson Thompson family alone, there are more than 80 descendants. Hopefully, we can keep the spirit of their ancestors, of our ancestors, strong in our minds and souls. I believe that Thomas Olson Helley and his wife, Kari Hoime, Torius Torreson and his wife Ann Johnson, Tolif Nielsen and Ingeborg Lassesen, and Evan and Guri Geraldson would be extremely proud of what these families have become. <laughs>